Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekakudash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, one acknowledge all the Akiam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. I'm going to go in on Isaiah, the third chapter, through the Spirit. It says, For behold, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff and the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man and the prophet, I'm sorry, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. The captain of fifty and honorable and the honorable man and the counselor, the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. Right. Going into how our people have fallen. Right. Where our people are are called the degenerate plant. And if you go to Jeremiah 2 and 23. You know, because we used to be noble, mighty men, men who understood these these scriptures. And now, you know, we've been brought up in our captivities here in Babylon, America is our most recent captivity, which makes us degenerates, right? Because our people, they don't have a reverence for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know, they don't know who they are. That's what that word degenerate means. It means that you're not what you once were. It says in Jeremiah 2 and 21. Yet I planted thee a holy noble. I'm sorry. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into a degenerate plant. Of a strange vine unto me. Right. Because you Israelites. You two thirds. You, you don't repent. You don't. You know, you're going to stay in the strange laws of the heathen, right? And those were never meant for us. We were never meant to, to you know, follow, you know, and learn the ways of the heathen. All right? But that's what you have in America, Babylon, which that word Babylon goes into confusion. So it shows you our people are all confused on every single thing. Isaiah 3, even on their... Uh, <laughs> On their nationality, their race, because you know they'll tell you they're mixed and whatnot. When Yahweh doesn't acknowledge mixed race, you're with the pedigree of your father. That's what you. That's what race you are. Whatever your father is. So let's go back to Isaiah three and five. It says, "And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself." Proudly against the ancient, and base against, and the base against the honorable. So everything's ass backwards here in Babylon. All right, our people are oppressed, are they not? Even even the heathen are oppressed, but the the most oppressed are the are the Israelites, even here in Babylon. Okay, you know these the, you have the Roman, the modern day Roman soldiers. They just lurk in these streets. Um, you know, always oppressing, harassing, arresting, you know, killing the Israelites, right? It happens to us more than any other, uh, you know, more than any of these heathen. Verse 6. <laughs> when a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day... He swear, or in that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. So our people, they don't even want to be the leaders. Our people don't, our people don't want to, um, you know, receive truth. They, the, you know, they don't want to be a ruler. They don't want, they don't have a ruling class mentality, right? They have a, a simple, simpleton mentality. You know, they want the least responsibility. They don't want to be held accountable. You know, they don't want to, they don't want to, really you're supposed to be a priest if you're an Israelite, a man, and you're supposed to lead, 
you know, by uh, by uh, the example of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, you know, following the ways and the paths of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. But our people don't want to be, they don't want to be uh, held to that. See? Verse 7. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not, oh, I read that. Salakia. Verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against Yahweh to provoke the eyes of his glory. Right, so our people are not doing, they're not, you know, we have the remnant, the, the elect are coming back into remembrance. But the majority, the two-thirds, they're, they're not coming into this glory. They're not coming into this, uh, you know, this says Judah has fallen, Jerusalem is ruined. Now that gives you some understanding on on those uh, on that word Nephilim where it says giants in Genesis. Listen, the the giants is dealing with um, the ne which is a Nephilim. That's that how you say that word giant, and it means fallen ones. It's telling you right here who the fallen ones are. Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen. It's talking about our people, all right? It's not talking about no giants, no overly sized human beings. Literally talking about our people. Our people are fallen. Starting out with Judah, right? And that's the head tribe. Verse 9. The show, uh, the shoe of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Right? You're going to be bring bad times to yourself, you Israelites, who are, you know, following the ways of the heathen, following the, in the ways of Esau. You, know, you you want to be homosexuals, transgenders, you know you, you don't hide it anymore. This, this is you know you declare your sin as Sodom. You're not ashamed of your sin. Matter of fact, you take pride in your sin in this wicked place. You know the, that's why they call it uh, gay pride. You know they're telling you they're proud to be gay, which that's a total abomination to Yahweh Bashem Yoshai. And also, if you're in the right mindset, it's an abomination to the elect. You know, but these people, they don't hide their sin. There used to be that term, uh, you know, oh, he's in the closet. Man, <coughs> because Babylon has made that such a normality around this wicked society, people don't feel like they need to be in the closet anymore. You know, yesterday or maybe a couple of days ago, I, I was downtown uh, doing some work and I, I looked over, I see a family. And uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, um, just the four of them, right? The parents. Then you had uh, two daughters, which you really should only had one daughter. But you could tell that one of the kids was a, a, a boy. He was wearing a dress, you know, walking around downtown. And I was just thinking, and you could see the look on his dad's face. You know, he's not happy about that, you know. But this place doesn't hide it. Verse 10. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Right? You're going to get what you deserve. You, you people don't want to listen and get in line with Yahweh Bashem Yashai. You're going to learn the hard way. You're going to eat the fruit of your doings. You want to be wicked? Well, you're going to get, you're going to receive wickedness. Yahweh's going to be, he's going to put some wickedness on your ass. All right? Guaranteed. That's what the whole scripture is about. Right? Verse 11, woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Talking about Esau. Destruction to the wicked, Esau. Because why? Because you're the one who sets up this uh, and allows all this madness. Right? If our people were there in their right mindset, you know, which like we're going to be in the kingdom, you're not going to have the, you know, freedom of religion, freedom of being able to decide if you want to change your sex or gender or, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna have all that, what you call liberty right now, all right? You're gonna be following the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai in the kingdom, and if you if you don't want to follow the laws of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai in the kingdom, you're gonna be put to death, and that's literally what it is. That's why you're gonna actually have fear in that day, all right? Verse thirteen. Yahweh standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. Oh shit, I think I skipped one. I skipped one. Verse 12. As for my people, 
Children are their oppressors, and ru women rule over them, O my people. They which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. All right? And you have, that's what you see in America, man. You got all these parents feeling guilty because they, they got divorced, they have kids. And so their, their whole goal in life is to please the fucking kid, which that ain't what it is. Because they, they, they try to please the kid because of their guilt. Now, if you, you know, if you're in that situation, you should still raise your kid where, you know, you put, you know, being realistic with them. You don't, you don't sit there and, and uh, let them run the show. You don't sit there and let them uh, walk all over you or get them whatever the hell they want because of your guilt. I see this shit all the time, man. And you, you're not supposed to let kids rule over you. You're not supposed to let a woman rule over you if you're an Israelite, man. All right? Women, you, you, you know, it don't matter what the situation is. She should never rule over you. That's not her That's not her lot. That's not her role. All right? And we didn't learn this until we've gotten the truth. Because I know brothers were, you know, with women in the past... And we, you know, unknowingly, we, you know, you, you fall in love with a woman or you, you, you know what I'm saying? You, you end up, next thing you know, that, that woman you're in love with is ruling over you, you know? And you're dealing with shit that you normally wouldn't be dealing with. Though. So you, you come out of that spirit when you're getting this truth. See? You know that. You see the red flag. Now, if you're really sincere and you're really in this truth, you get with a woman, there's no way in hell she's going to rule over you. Because the, the the truth part of the truth is teaching our people how to be how to be men. All right. And where are we at? Verse thirteen. Yahweh standeth up to judge to plead and standeth to judge the people. And Yahweh will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard; the spoil of the poor is in your houses. The ancients are the are the are the righteous souls, the first fruits. All right, the ancients are the, are the elect, the prophets, namely. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna judge with Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. That's gonna be part of our uh, you know part of our glory, part of our um, joint heir with Yahweh Shai. You know that's gonna be a privilege that the that the elect. Are going to share with you how about Shem Shai. And why? Because like it says here. For ye have eaten up the vineyard. The spoil of the poor is in your houses. Right. You you people who are going off. The heathen. The one, the two thirds. You know. You're, you're, you, 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 you devoured the vineyard. Right. And the spoil of the poor is in your houses. Meaning the Israelites. They, they lost everything. They fell. And you people are just. You know, part of the wickedness, part of the problem. So that's why the majority of the people are going to face death and destruction. Verse 15. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith Yahweh the Most High of hosts? Right, and if you're not in this mindset of the truth, you're, you're included in, in uh, beating the people to the pieces and grinding the faces of the poor. Right, just basically fucking up, devouring the Lord's people. Verse 16. Moreover, saith Yahweh, moreover, Yahweh saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking, mincing as they go and making a tingling with their feet. Talking about our women being hoes, being flirts, being sluts, being, you know, body counts, being, uh, you know, going through the roof. You know, that's the that's these Israelite women, you so called Latina, the black Latina, Native American women. Y'all are the y'all are the biggest hoes on the planet. And that's what we told we read about it earlier. You don't you know, you don't um you don't hide it. You don't hide your shame. Just like these 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 uh you know, homosexuals don't hide their shame. You women, you don't hide your shame. Just go to just go to a freaking Walmart, bro. You what you gonna see? You're gonna see our women dressed like sluts no matter what shape or size they are they're going to be having their ass and titties hanging out and even if they have a man they still do the shit which you that's that's your man's shit he, he should be the only one that looks at that shit verse 17 therefore the lord yahweh will smite with the scab of the crown of the head of the daughters of zion and yahweh will discover their secret parts right so that's why the head tribe judah 
Benjamin and Levi, the, the, the so-called black women, right? She, she has a hard time growing out her hair, you know? And I've had I've had a few black women. I've had, and I guess what? Every time I'm dealing with a black woman, guess what she's dealing with? A wig or a weave, all right? Or extensions, you know? I mean, I had one. She was, her hair was a little bit, you know, long, but not as this is that curse on that, on the, on the Southern Kingdom women. Y'all women don't, y'all have women have a look at Jada Pinkett. You have a hard time growing your hair. Even really, what you talk about Willow Smith, her daughter, she's, her hair ain't long either. All right. These scriptures don't lie. Verse 18. In the day, Yahweh will take away the bravery of their tinkling or ornaments. I'm sorry, or, tinkling ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round like and their round tires like the moon. You know, talking about their earrings and shit. And, uh, you know, just walking around like they're the shit, like walking around with, you know, not a care in the world, right? Because they know all these simpletons are going to bust, you know, raise their ego, you know, kiss their ass in wickedness, commit adultery, you know? If they have social media, what they got a false sense of pride because they, they, you know, they think all these men want want them when they only want to they only want to pop them. Then when that starts happening over and over, now you just got a, a fucking defeated uh, woman who's a wreck. All right, the women with the highest body counts are the are the ones with the most uh, psychological, spiritual, mental problems. You know, a woman's not not meant to be. Busted by busted by every dude. That's just not what it is, you know. Verse nineteen: the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings, the nose jewels. All right. See all this damn jewelry on these har these harlots. You know you saw you see when they get out get ready for this girls' night out and they're going to a club or if it's a girls' vacation. And what do they do? They, this is their chance to all be whores. You know? Leaving nothing to the imagination. Hiding not their shame. You know, these women go to the clubs looking like straight skanks. And I mean, like, you know, we're men. So, of course, we're going to look. But the thing is, is, <clears throat> you know, um, what if she's out here, She's she's got a so-called husband... Because these men are simpletons. They'll let their wives go to girls' night out dressed like sluts. And <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now you're committing adultery with your eyes. So this whole place has to go, man. Verse, uh, what am I, 22. The changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. It shall come to pass, instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And this is talking about their pussies. Because why? Their pussies start to stink when they got all these different dudes busting up in them. You know, it's not meant for a woman to have that. And if, if a woman has a bad odor, bad smell, uh, nine times out of ten, it's because she's been popping multiple men. All right? I say, these scriptures don't lie, man. And instead of a girdle or ramp, Instead of a well-set hair, baldness, as I was just talking about. Instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Right, You especially if you if you go to pop a, one of these women, these Babylonian women, and her shit's not smelling right, man, you, you know, you better think twice just because, you know, that's probably an STD, you know? Because these women are out here are loose as hell these days, Right? So instead of burning, instead of beauty, why is why is it gonna be she's burn? She's gonna burn you. Cause she done had her body count went up by ten in the last two weeks, maybe less. You know. It says, "Thy men shall fall by the sword, and the mighty in the war, and her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground." Right, the men shall fall by the sword, and the mighty in the war. So, so the men are going to fall by the sword or by those missiles when this, when this place just gets really judged, right? When Yahweh allows the uh, 
it, when he puts the spirit on the nations to start firing missiles at each other, you know, that's the sword that the men are going to fall by. And the mighty, which are the, 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 uh, the military, they're going to be sent to the Middle East for Armageddon. And they're going to, you know, that's how the, these men are going to die. The men of war are going to die. That's why there's going to be a multiple women that don't have husbands because all these, listen, listen to that line, these men dying left and right. The men by the sword and the mighty in the war. So that's going to open up. You know, and then these women, these they're going to be desolate, it says here. They sit upon the ground. Meaning they're going to be sitting on the ground with no hope, no man, you know, no nothing. You know, just desolateness. That means despair. Right? They're going to be like the girl in uh, in that movie, uh, Book of Eli. You know, she was handcuffed to a grocery cart. Um, just sitting there on the ground, desolate. That's what this is talking about. It's biblical prophecy. All right. When they make those movies, they get their uh, their visions and their ideas from the scriptures. Okay. And um, you know that begs to for the, I'm going to read the first verse of Isaiah four because these women are going to be so so fucking desperate, desolate, helpless, hopeless. You know. Needy. This is they're gonna come and humble them. They're gonna get humbled. They're gonna get humbled by all the surroundings. It's gonna be the outlaw wild wild west here in Babylon, America, a third world country which is coming to this society, coming to this soil, American soil. You know, right now you think that America's gonna continue like it is right now with women dressed like whores. Women in power ruling over their men, ruling over, you know, ru kids ruling over their parents. You think that shit's going to be forever. But according to the scriptures, these women are going to be desolate and humbled. All right. And Isaiah 4 and 1, because of that des desperate desperation and the desolation and, and that state of humbleness. Guess what? Isaiah 4 and 1 is going to come to pass. And that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel, let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. You see that? So when it comes to that point, the women are going to be like, hey, I just want a husband. I don't care if you have 10 other wives, okay? I'll be 11. They're going to be in that spirit. That's how desperate, humble, and, and Lord's gonna, the Lord your house is going to perform that prophecy. All right, just like all the prophecies in the scripture, right? So a lot of times we say, "Oh, we're waiting for these two major prophecies, the the the, the micro C hip, and then the missiles." But guess what? This is also a prophecy we're waiting on. These women are going to cleave to one man, and when it says seven, you got to remember seven means complete. So whatever makes you complete, you know, if you're a man of the Lord, if He preserves you. You know, if you're part of the elect, this is a prophecy for you. All right. You're going to be kicking girls to the curb that you never thought you would kick to the curb in that day. Because you're going to have an abundance. All right. Instead of the 45 year old divorcee, you're going to take, uh, you know, the, the 19 year old baddie. You see, you know, you're going to have a choice, man. I mean, really, you go by the spirit on, on who gets who you who you choose to be with. But I'm just, you know, I'm just putting it out there, you know, what it could be. So anyway, I don't know. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rekakodash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone. Um, you know, and Shalom to all the brothers pushing the, pushing the truth with sincerity. Shalom, Bad Babal to Babylon America, Bad Babal.